This is just a quick video on how to animate material parameters in Unreal Engine 5 using keyframes in Sequencer. Should be pretty fun. I'll show you step by step on how to do it. Let's jump in. Okay, so just a quick breakdown of my scene for the animation at the beginning of this video. So I'm just gonna open up the master sequence. I've got a subsequence of the animation of the spheres. So if I just double click, as you can see, this is where I've animated each sphere that also syncs up to the timing of the music. So I've also imported the audio file so I can make sure it syncs up with the notes of the song, uh, as well as the keyframing of the uh, emissive, sorry, the emissive values of the sphere. So as you can see here, I go from the spherical kind of chrome balls into the emissive uh, material. And what I've done at the exact same time is also turned off or lowered the intensity of the uh, surrounding lights here. So if I scrub through the timeline real quick, you can see this spotlight sort of moves around really slowly as well as this rectangular light. As you can see here, it just comes down slowly just to cast a few more shadows on this space. Uh, the scene was modeled in Cinema 4D, imported in through the Cineware workflow, so definitely check out my video on that. And for the post-process settings, I've got a bit of bloom intensity, actually a decent amount of bloom intensity. Exposure's been locked at one. And then for my lumen reflection, sorry, just my general lumen settings, all the quality sliders have been maxed out and I'm using hit lighting for reflections to make sure I have high quality reflections. All right, now let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I'm in Unreal Engine 5.3.2 and I'm in a completely blank level. So let's just start from scratch. First thing you wanna do is grab a shape cube and we will press Alt 3 to go to unlit mode or you can press Alt 4 to go to lit, but I have no lights in the scene. So for now, I will go to unlit mode, press R to go to the scale tool and I'm just gonna scale this out and that should be fine for now. And then the next thing I'm gonna grab is a sphere. So now I've got a cube and a sphere. I'm gonna now press Alt 4 to go back to lit mode. And then I'm just going to grab a rectangular light. Place this in the scene, turn off my snapping. Wrong one, turn on my snapping. Cool, so now you should just have a cube, uh, a cube, a sphere, and a rectangular light just pointing at the sphere. Now I want you to go into your materials folder or wherever you're making your materials. Right click, material, and do M underscore, whatever you wanna call it, I'll call mine animated material, zero one. It's not really an animated material, but we're gonna keyframe it, you know what I mean. Uh, and I'm using substrate materials, but this does not matter at all for this tutorial. As you can see here, I'm actually using the default shading node for the front material, so you should be able to follow along. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is just minimize the material, right click the one we just made, create material instance and call it MI animated material underscore zero one drag that onto the sphere and now we are good to go. Okay, the first value that we are going to animate is the emissive uh, values, so the emissive intensity. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a scalar parameter. So I'm gonna hold S and click, uh, S and click, yep, <laughs> and call it emissive intensity. Then I'm gonna hold V and click to get a vector parameter, which is pretty much letting us pick a color, so I'm gonna call this color. I'll just make this a slightly warm light gray, plug this into base color, and then drag it out another wire into the node graph space into a multiply, hit enter, drag the emissive intensity into B, and then the output of the multiply into emissive color. 
And now we should be able to hit apply, save. And if I now open up the material instance, animated, I'm just gonna search for it because I have a lot. Now we should have a slider that lets us control the emissive intensity. So this is what we call a scalar parameter. So like a float value that moves between two different numbers or floats and we can now adjust it on the fly in the material instance. Now, how do we get access to this parameter in a sequencer or in a timeline in an animation? Well, we're gonna use something called a material parameter collection. You might've noticed before in my materials folder, I have another folder called MPC and this stands for material parameter collection. So what we'll do is I'll just minimize my material, right click, find material and then find material parameter collection. I'm gonna call mine MPC underscore parameters underscore zero two because I already have a zero one. We want to double click that open. And now you can see this pretty much is an array or lets us make uh, a list of different scalar or vector parameters that we want to have access to in a sequencer. As you might have guessed, the first thing we'll make is a scalar parameter. Hit the plus icon, do the drop down of index zero, and then we will call this emissive intensity. And then hit save, and that's all we need to do for that. Now we're going to go back to our main material node graph and we can actually now disconnect this or actually just get rid of the initial scalar parameter we made altogether. And then we want to right click material parameter, nope, sorry, collection, collection parameter. I don't know why it's not material collection parameter, but just type in collection and then select collection parameter. In the drop down, we want to select the material parameter collection we just made. So that's O2 for me. And now in the drop down in the parameter name, we want to select emissive intensity. Drag that into B. And now you can think of this as the scalar parameter that we made earlier, but just replacing it. Now just hit save. You'll notice that it is now not available in our instance anymore because we will have to change that in a sequencer timeline. Also, just take note that the default value will be important here. So if you want your material to start or its default value to be one, hit save. You can see now it's one. If we can make it back to zero, it goes down to zero. So you can technically control it here as well. Now let's make a new sequence. I'm gonna minimize that, go to my sequencer folder, animated, and then I'm just gonna create a new sequence. Right click, cinematics, level sequence. I'm gonna call it LS underscore tutorial underscore shot one. Now in this empty sequence, we want to hit the plus on the track icon and then find material parameter collection track and then find the one you just made, select it and you'll now have a track where you can add, if I click the plus here, add emissive intensity. And then just like any other parameter, if I twirl this down, we can keyframe it. So if I want it to go from zero to one in one second, hit one, and now you've got a timeline or a keyframing of that value. So now when you have access to this sort of power, you can end up playing a lot with the different values in a material. This is where you can make really dynamic things such as animating the colors of something, uh, which I kind of, which I definitely did in my render passes animation, which you can check on my Instagram right here. We can animate the roughness values. We can animate the metallic values, which I did in the beginning of this video in that animation. So definitely play around with that. I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. Uh, open up the material parameter collection once again. So I'm just going to find it real quick. Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> this guy, and I'm going to add. Another scalar parameter, I'll call it metallic. And I will add another one and call it roughness. And I'll also add a vector parameter. And then I will call this color. And I'll make the default color 
again like a warm gray, a warm white gray value, hit save and then go back to our node graph and we can now delete this guy. I'm just going to duplicate the node we created earlier of the collection parameter control D and then I'll change it from emissive intensity to metallic for now. So let's drag that into metallic and then control D, change it to roughness and then control D, change it to color and then drag that into base color. Now we hit save and apply. And one thing I'm gonna quickly do is change the default roughness to something like 0.3 and then hit save. Cool, so if we go back into our sequencer now, we can add all the other values or parameters that we just made, so metallic, roughness and color. So just to play around, I'll start off with a zero metallic and then go up to a one. And then maybe I'll also start on a point seven roughness and then end on a zero. So it becomes kind of chrome like, and then I'll drag that out. And then as you can see, we are now animating this material and then maybe we want to animate the color so say I reverse these nodes, so we'll start with chrome and then we'll start with like a metallic chrome and then go to like a matte non-metallic material and I'll also go from this color value here. Now, as you can see, this is the bad part or I guess a limitation when you're adding vector parameters in the sequencer. You can only edit the RGB values in in this timeline editor so you're going to have to like manually think okay do i want more red more green you can't just color pick something which is definitely a bit annoying i could be wrong though so if you do have a method or know how i can just use a color color wheel or color picker to adjust the colors of my collection parameter my vector parameter uh, please let me know in the comments below because it is super frustrating we'll just go from that cream to a more green color go back to the beginning and there we go. So really simple tutorial. Hopefully this is useful. I really think you can make some cool stuff with these simple parameters and it can really help make your scene dynamic and play with some ideas creatively. And see you in the next one. Peace. Basic shape. Oh. Okay, let's start that again. I have done that.